But right now, we need to focus on Friday and what we're going to learn about wage growth. We do that with Ellen Zetner of Morgan Stanley. I think of Tom Porcelli over at RBC Capital Markets really trying to massage wage growth dynamics with the spirit of the nation. How can we have wage growth if top line GDP is so weak? I just don't get that. Well, because the, the areas where we've got stronger wage growth are the areas where we pay the least. Uh, and so we took a deep dive into wage growth, a sector by sector look, and even within sectors, subsectors, a very disaggregated look. We've been creating the majority of jobs in the areas where the wage bill is very small. Hamburger so flippers and retail. Re right? Retail jobs, leisure and hospitality within the healthcare sector, home healthcare workers, temporary service worker jobs. Those are all jobs that pay lower than the national okay. median. For and so they don't, they're not big enough this to move the needle in the I, aggregate. I'm beginning to hammer by this by people that watch and listen to Bloomberg surveillance. When do we get real wage growth in real jobs? So what we saw when we finally looked at it at and at took a disaggregated approach is that wage growth is starting to broaden out across more sectors and it's just starting to move into higher wage paying sectors. And that's why we just now started to get those early reads on stronger wage growth because the wage bill in these sectors is finally big enough to move the needle in the aggregate. And so this is a strengthening from the ground up, from the roots up, and it's finally wide out enough to move the needle and that's important but it's a slow process. Ellen will it come from demand for companies goods or will it come from just worker frustration and worker demands? I think it comes from slack in the labor market slowly continuing to come out. We have low labor force participation rates. We do have an unemployment rate that continues to come down. We're simply getting more and more people employed over time and very slowly labor market slack has been diminishing. Uh, so it's just been a slow moving beast and we're just now able to see it in the aggregate even though the unemployment rate has come down so far. Are you watching cities like L.A. and Seattle that have raised the minimum wage to see what the economic consequences are? Yeah, so we've, we've quantified when these large cities raised the minimum what wage. Happens? We quantified when six states earlier this year raised the minimum wage. Well, when six states did it, covering millions of employees in January, it provided about a 0.02 percentage point boost to the monthly growth rate mean? in wages that month. It meant that, that you're affecting the lowest paid workers by that. raising their wages a little bit. And so it still was not enough to move the needle in the aggregate. But every bit helps. I mean, the federal minimum wage is becoming obsolete, ridiculous, because so many states pay more than it now, and so many metropolitan areas pay well more than even the state minimum wages. Uh, and so it has... It has helped lift so individuals in terms of wage growth. Two percent inflation without a significant change in how how workers are paid in this country. You can, and because one thing that Janet Yellen would tell you, if she were sitting right here, is that wage growth does not lead price growth. Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, where the price pressures are coming from in the U.S., domestic service prices are running around two and a half percent. That's not the problem. The problem is that we've got weak global growth, a stronger U.S. dollar, and a collapse in core goods prices in the U.S. And so it's sort of yeah, two factors butting heads. Domestically, we've got plenty of price pressures, health care service prices, rent prices yeah, okay. are up. But, but, but we're importing a lot of disinflation. Uh, Brendan, the heart of this is the chart of the year like two years ago, which is median household income yeah. rolled over and is dead. We've got the chart of the day coming up, uh, which talks about, single best chart talks about that. When do you suggest real median household income lifts just a little bit? We think that we're, we're in we're there? that nascent process right now okay. because we do see wage growth broadening and strengthening. You've got to take, you've got to take a chance, Tom, right. and turn a little bit less pessimistic and kind of start to... Is she lecturing me? I, full full I think she is. I get more mail on this than anything but gold. A bit. I get, I, it's a surveillance break exclusive. How Zentner lectures back? me this morning. <laughs> she come back every day of the week. I got a tweet on my, my bow tie. This is a different bow tie. It's French. I'm it's just marveling. It's it, from Paris. I, I, I just I wore it. this for Lagarde. It looks like today, ice cream, Tom. I, is it okay? With a little sprinkle of the dots yeah. ice cream. People don't it's like good. it. You know. I feel like I'm not getting enough tweets about the fact that I'm wearing ties at all. Oh, I'll tweet you right now, Brendan. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Please.